Okay, I'm Christina Rodriguez. I will likely not be a member of the Kurtz Lab any longer when you're watching this video. Uh, but this is the first Incusite video. This one is about just initially putting your, your plate onto the machine as far as telling the machine that it needs to start scanning for that plate. So if you have never actually put a plate physically onto the machine before, uh, you should talk to Oslin and Ben Spikes Lab uh, or whoever is the current administrative machine and have somebody show you how to do that and what to watch out for with that. So, but just for when you're initially putting on your plate, regardless of it's a proliferation plate or a, a wound scratch assay, this process is going to be pretty similar. So this is, video is going to remain the same for both. So what you're going to do is here at the top left, this is the screen when you initially log in to the Incusite software. Again, all of that should be on a post-it note uh, on the computer that the lab uses for that. So that will, this is what will pop up and you're gonna go over here, over the left, to schedule scans. So, and what you're gonna see here at the top is a timeline. And what we always have it set to is to scan every two hours. Uh, and what you can see is that it just finished scanning this one plate. The next scan is gonna be at 6 p.m. Uh, and it's gonna be, if I hover over that little skinny bar, it's gonna be about two minutes long. If there were more plates on here, if more wells were being scanned, more images per well being scanned, that would take up more time and this bar would be a lot wider. Uh, and this would depict that. So I'm gonna uh, kind of touch back about why that's important later on. So what your next thing is over here on the left, top left, you're gonna see uh, the slots. And so say you are signed up uh, for the rear right slot, that's back here, the front of the instrument, as you can see, is here. Um, or if you were signed up for the front right, middle right, you get it. So say you're in the front right, uh, what you're gonna do is click add vessel and if you were doing a proliferation experiment, um, we normally use the Corning 96 well plates, which I believe are 3596, yep. You can double check that, that again, uh, we keep on a post-it note on the laptop that we use for this in the lab, uh, or if you are at home, you can also just type in uh, Corning and then look through for the Corning 96 well, uh, or whatever plates we're using at your point in the future. So, no, yeah, 3596 for a regular, this is just for a regular proliferation experiment. So you can just double click this and that'll put that on there. And what it does is it automatically sets just a, a standard scan pattern for it. And the scan pattern, as you can see over here, it's gonna take about three minutes long. It tells you that right here. And it's just the pattern in which the machine will scan. So will it scan all of these wells and how many images per well is it gonna take? So automatically when you have put this plate on here under channel selection, you'll see phases already picked. That's pretty much what we always want. But if you were doing uh, some kind of fluorescence that you wanted to be able to monitor, Incusite does have uh, some really cool assays that they sell in which you can um, perform transfections and and measure different things. It, it, they're, they're cool assays, but there's a bunch of them. Um, but then you could choose your green and, and red channels to acquire that fluorescence. Uh, but for the most part, we're generally just on phase regardless of it's of if it's a proliferation assay or a wound scratch. So you don't really have to click anything there. You can see the scan mode already goes to standard uh, and that the scan pattern automatically picks the sample pattern. And you can see that many of us have uh, our own patterns saved on here. So you can see ACR, those are my initials. Um, this is mine. You can see that doubled it to six minutes because I've got two images per well picked. Um, you know, and, and these little info bars are here and, and will help remind you of some of these things. One of those being about editing the scan pattern. So here at the bottom left below the plate, you can see this edit scan patterns option. And if you have empty wells, which is often the case, 
you want to make sure that you are not scanning those wells. It's really important. You don't want to be wasting storage space on the site, and you don't want to be wasting uh, scan time on wells that weren't needed to begin with. Uh, and that scan time is going to be something I'm going to come back to. So say you weren't scanning, you didn't have any cells in your top row and your bottom row, all you do is hold down the Alt or Option slash Alt button if you're on a Mac and just drag and click uh, over those cells. So just while holding down the Alt and it reminds you of that down here at the bottom. Okay. And if you are actually and, and you want to bring those back, just drag and click over them. You don't have to press the Alt button at that point. So, and here is where you can change how many images per well. So we have, we normally do two images uh, per well, and you can see they're up and down from each other. And we can kind of just get more data that way. And it doesn't take much time on the proliferation. However, if it were a wound scratch assay, we only do one image per well. So in fact, I'm gonna go back now uh, so say you had gotten to this point and then remembered, oh wait, this is not my usual proliferation assay, this is actually a wound scratch. You need to make sure that you're picking the right plate for that. So you'll go back over here, remove the vessel, go back to add vessel, and now you'll put in the number for wound scratch, I think is 4379, yep. So that is our SN image lock plates. So it has to be uh, performed on those. And again, you can just double click on that or you can press OK and that'll automatically put it in here. You can see the for just a proliferation one, it only took three minutes to do one image per well. For this, it takes 13 minutes. So that's one of the major reasons we only do one image uh, per well. But you will notice, I'm editing the scan pattern, but it takes a sec. Click, there we go. If you were to does not want me to click on things. There we go. If you were to switch to two images per well, uh, if for whatever reason for that experiment you wanted to do that and there was enough time and enough storage, etc., cetera, um, you'll see that they are not on top of each other. The scratch, when you do the scratch, is going uh, horizontally. So that's why those images are that way. But we pretty much always do uh, one image per well and that should treat you well. So at this point, you could technically go ahead and press apply. So it's got just the phase picked. Most of the time, again, we don't have those channel selections. You've edited your sample pattern. Um, and if you want to actually name this whole plate, you can go over to properties and put that here in the label. That can actually be kind of nice later on when you're just looking at those plates and you don't have your lab notebook next to you to tell you which plate you put on that day or which, which slot you put it on. So it's not necessary though, but that's something you can do. But the other thing that is uh, great to consider doing is if this is a cell line that we have done these experiments on before uh, or media conditions that we have done them in before, you can go ahead and have it doing the analysis during. That's going to save you a few hours at the end because normally when you take it off of the site and then tell it to analyze everything, that's going to take a few hours for it to do because it has to go through and apply a processing definition to each well at each scan time and depending on how many images per well. So it, that takes it uh, quite a long time. So what you would do is go down if it was a proliferation assay, you'd pick basic analyzer. And if it was a uh, scratch wound, with the, which this is, you would pick scratch wound. And you can see it automatically gives you some of the ones uh, that all of the ones that have been set up before. So if you don't see one that applies to your cell type, that probably means it hasn't been done before and you can't do this right now. You'll have to go back to none um, and set that up later. And that's no big deal. Uh, this just is nice for when you're doing a bunch of them and, and you definitely know you have that processing definition set. So if you were doing that, you could, sorry, scratch wound, say, uh, I'm normally doing Ishikawa cells, so that's the Ishi scratch. And then you could name that analysis job. So this is name of the plate, but this is the name of that actual analysis uh, on this plate. So the other thing to consider, if there were multiple plates on here, if there are more people using the site at once, uh, which is often the case, 
we're in COVID-19 right now, so uh, things are more limited. But that would mean that there is more time being taken up to scan. And the thing is, for every minute that it's scanning, it needs a minute of cool-down time, uh, which means that though it scans every two hours, it only has about an hour's worth of scanning time. So that's where it really becomes important how many wells you have, uh, and it becomes a consideration how many images you're taking per well, etc. So you just want to keep that in mind if, if you do see a lot of plates on here that you are going to fit be able to fit it in. Um, and it will give you an, uh, a message, and you can talk to Oslin if, if it is going to be some kind of issue. So, But normally it's not. It's just something to be aware of, that it really does only have that one hour overall, and that's why I keep reiterating how important it is to not be scanning empty wells. And you also don't want to be uh, wasting the storage space on the device. It's extremely important also. So at this point, you've maybe picked an analysis job so that it's already running as it goes and it'll be done when you're done with the Incus site and you already have that data. At this point, you can now press apply the bottom right.